But the guy's a Jew. He lost family members in the Holocaust. Okay, he wanted to study in Israel. Does this sound like a neo-Nazi? That's just ridiculous. It's just as ridiculous as it can be. How do we fix this problem in Ukraine? There's limited things to what the United States can do, granted. Um, Something we have to remember, though, uh, let's look at history, and we have to learn from history. President Biden has said countless times, we're not putting boots on the ground. I support that. I wish he wouldn't say it three times a day, but I do support that because it, you all, I mean, maybe you want Putin to think maybe this will happen. Maybe he wouldn't be so aggressive. I don't know. Okay. But during World War II, the United States didn't put boots on the ground until very late in the war. If you read history, by the time we entered the war in Europe, Russia already had Germany on the run. Germany had peaked and were waning by the time we came into the war. When we came into the war, all we did was put a battle on the Western Front because they had more than they could handle on the Eastern Front and in Africa. So Germany was already losing on the Eastern Front. They were losing in Africa. And then we started the Western Front War. How many troops were lost in World War II? Well, the U.K. lost 380,000 troops. They lost 450,000 people total in World War II. The U.S., we lost 418,000 troops. Okay? Germany, the ones who started the war, they lost 5.5 million troops, and they lost 8 million total citizens. This is a country of 60 million people, so they lost more than 10% of their population in that war. The USSR, friends, the USSR lost over 10 million troops in World War II. That's right. Two to one, the Russian losses. As far as their total losses, citizens and military, 28 million Russians died in World War II compared to 8 million Germans. So Russia lost three times the people that Germany lost in World War II. Dear listeners, if you know history, the Russians overwhelmed the Germans on the Eastern Front in World War II because they kept throwing more people at the problem. We lost a million, send a million more. We lost two million, send two million more. We lost two million, send three million more troops. And they just outnumbered them. That's how they beat Germany. Today's Russian, I don't think they'll stomach that again. The days of the Russian saying, we will live on beets and vodka for the good of Mother Russia, friends, that ship has sailed. The sanctions, I think, are working. The sanctions are the way to do this, but we need to double down on the sanctions. And something that the Russian people have to know, because this will all be over one day. It will be, and Ukraine will be restored back to a democracy. I don't know when. It may be 10 years. I don't know when, but it will happen because it always happens. Look at history. If the people will it, it happens. It's just the way things work. If the Russian people understand that they have to pay the bill, every building you bomb, you're going to have to rebuild. Every bridge that's destroyed, you're going to have to rebuild. Every hospital that's destroyed, you're going to have to rebuild. Every family member that loses a every family that loses a member, you're going to have to write a check to make them whole. And by the way, your economy has already tanked, and it's the pro, in the process of tanking even more. You're going to have to write the check. You're going to have to pay the bill. And the average Soviet again, I'm sorry, the average Russian again will not live on beets and vodka for Mother Russia because they like nice cars. They like good wine. They like good food. They've had a taste of the West, and they're not going back to that baloney. They're not going to do it. So once again, will this be the world versus Putin, or will this be the world versus Russia? That's up to the people of Russia.
And in the meantime, dear listeners, you now know just a little bit more about the Vladimir Zelensky that you never knew. Well, that's it. I'm done. James Strong Show at Hotmail.com. That's the email address. Send me your email address. I will send you a copy of the link so you can download it and listen to it at your leisure. Or just go to any of the multi, multi hundreds of websites out there that host the James Strong Show podcast. iHeartRadio. Tune in. Uh... See, I'm even on YouTube, so if you don't see any dopey pictures of me. Geo Savan for my friends in India. Did you know the 6% of all people who listen to the James Strong Show podcast are from India? I had no idea. Uh, Podbean, you name it, I'm on it. Just go to any of those places. Uh, Spotify, uh, just, just go to any of those sites. Google James Strong Show, and there I am. Well, that's it. I'm done. Hope you have a good day. Hope you have a good weekend. Hope you have a good week. Until next time, this is James Strong saying... Adios.